Welcome to this tutorial where we will be discussing our intracellular organelles called lysosomes. And these little guys are quite complex, so I'll summarize the process of where they come from and what they do as best I can. So if we have a eukaryotic cell here with a nucleus, we are also going to have an endoplasmic reticulum here associated with the nuclear membrane and a Golgi apparatus nearby. And the Golgi apparatus is going to be producing lysosomal vesicles. So if we have a closer look at what's going on in this area, we can find out exactly how this process happens. So we've got this nucleus here with its uh, rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum, and we have the Golgi apparatus right next to it. So we have the smooth endoplasmic reticulum here, and the rough endoplasmic reticulum here with the ribosomes studded all over it. Then we have our Golgi apparatus and our vesicles. So our Golgi apparatus is going to release lysosomal vesicles, but they aren't going to be full lysosomes just yet. Now let's take a quick moment to write down that our lysosomes are cellular suicide organelles, and that might sound a bit grim, but it's just referring to the fact that our lysosomes contain digestive enzymes and will be breaking down intracellular and extracellular components. Now to create our full lysosome, what we need is the help of something called an endosome. So our lysosomes are born from endosomes and the vesicles from our Golgi apparatus. So if I put a plasma membrane of our cell up here, so I'll just write down plasma membrane, we're going to have part of that membrane endocytose into the cell, and we can see it uh, forming an invagination here within the cell wall. It's going to form an endocytic vesicle, which will form a endosome. So once we've got the full endocytic vesicle are pinch off into the interior of our cell, we have an endosome. Okay, so we have our endosome now and our vesicle from the Golgi apparatus, which we know are eventually going to form the lysosome. But where do our actual digestive enzymes come from that perform the work of the lysosome? So let's take a look on the screen here and see exactly what's going to happen within this process. So we've got our digestive enzymes that will be formed within the rough endoplasmic reticulum from the amino acid chains created by our ribosomes studying the endoplasmic reticulum, and then they're going to be packaged within the Golgi apparatus. So if we have our ribosomes here producing an amino acid chain in translation, they're then going to uh, be folded into an enzyme within the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which will then go into a vesicle, which will travel across to the cis face of the Golgi apparatus, the cis being the receiving face of the Golgi apparatus, where they're then going to be packaged into new vesicles. But they're not just going to be packaged, they're also going to be labeled. And once they are labeled correctly, these digestive enzymes, they're then going to leave in a new vesicle. And that's going to happen on the trans face or the shipping face of the Golgi apparatus. Now this labeling that I just mentioned happening within the Golgi apparatus is very important. What's going to happen is all of these are digestive enzymes or peptides are going to be labeled with a mannose 6 phosphate tag and that tag tells uh, the Golgi apparatus that they're going to go to a specific enzyme. So if we have a tag here and I'll just zoom in if we pretend this is a digestive enzyme here within our Golgi apparatus it's getting a tag and this tag is a mannose 6 phosphate. Now when we get to the trans end of the Golgi apparatus we're going to find mannose 6-phosphate receptors. And these receptors interact with the tags that are placed on the digestive enzymes to make sure they all get packaged into the right vesicle. And once that vesicle is fully packed, it will bud off into the lysosomal vesicle. 
And I'll just point out here as well that at the moment our endosome is currently classified as an early endosome and it's slowly maturing and becoming more acidic through the action of vacuola ATPase pumps within its membrane. And this pump is going to just be actively uh, adjusting the proton concentration within the organelle to make sure it remains relatively acidic. And as that early endosome becomes more and more acidic, it's going to mature into the late endosome, which I'll just draw here. And our late endosome is the organelle that is going to fuse with our lysosomal vesicle and then allow the lysosome to mature into a full lysosome. So they're going to fuse here. And I'll just draw this fusion uh, vesicle here so we can see that those two have come together. And what's going to happen once those two uh, come together is that the acidic environment of the late endosome is going to allow the degradative or digestive enzymes of the lysosomal vesicle to dissociate with those mannose-6-phosphate receptors. And once they dissociate, they can then be active. And that's why we call the digestive enzymes of the lysosomes acid hydrolases. Acid hydrolases meaning they require an acidic environment to work efficiently. So we have these uh, enzymes that are active now that are going to bud away into new vesicles that will form full lysosomes and the late endosome may become a full lysosome itself so you can either have vesicles uh, budding off the late endosome to form lysosomes or the late endosome becoming a full lysosome itself and we'll just draw that here so we have a full lysosome now with activated enzymes and now the lysosome is just waiting to uh, fuse with or receive other structures from uh, the intracellular or extracellular environment so that it may digest them and help the cell recycle uh, its contents. So let's put up here that we have our full lysosome formed now and the lysosome is going to have our specific components within its membrane that's going to help those enzymes work efficiently. So as I've already said they're acid hydrolases so they require that acidic environment to be efficient. So we know we're going to need uh, pumps to maintain acidity within our membrane and we'll put that here right now. So our membrane of the lysosome is going to have these uh, pumps here and they're going to be uh, hydrogen pumps, so hydrogen ATPase pumps. And what they're going to do is maintain the acidic environment by pumping protons. So I'll put here acidic. Now we'll just write down as well that we have our lysosome full of acid hydrolases. So remember that these enzymes are all acid hydrolases. Now we know what the lysosome consists of and how it's made. What are the actual cellular processes that it's involved in? Well, we have three. Autophagy is one of them. And autophagy is just when we want to uh, recycle and digest an intracellular component. So if we were recycling an organelle, we do it through autophagy and the lysosome is involved in that. Now, if we were going to uh, degrade something that's coming from outside of the cell, we would call that endocytosis. So lysosomes are involved in endocytosis and also phagocytosis. Now, phagocytosis is when the cell engulfs an uh, extracellular object such as bacteria and we don't want to let that bacteria survive so we engulf it uh, into our cell forming a phagosome and then it will fuse with the lysosome where we can degrade and kill that bacteria. So what do we know about the lysosome now? We know it's involved in demolition and recycling so we'll say the lysosomes are part of the demolition and recycling crew of the cell. So lysosomes are just intracellular organelles that contain digestive enzymes that are waiting to uh, degrade and recycle anything that your cell wants to uh, reuse or kill.
I hope this video has helped you understand the lysosome a little bit better. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.